exclusive to Patreon in December, an all-new segment where I make fun of people's poorly written angry reviews of apps and products. Add this to the hours of bonus content you get when you support The Habit at patreon.com slash doseofbuckley. There are two entities with pretty much the worst fan bases on the internet, the K-pop group BTS and Elon Musk. I've made fun of K-pop audiences before, so let's talk about Elon Musk fans. First off, when the fuck did businessmen get fans? My guess is right around the time Steve Jobs started holding up iPods while wearing a turtleneck on a stage and people would jizz themselves over the next big Apple product, eagerly awaiting Stevie's next innovation or thing that his engineers whipped up that he got to hold up and take all the credit for during a press conference. There used to be a time when we just universally hated our bosses and the bosses of the world. That was one thing we had in common. But now we've got these pockets of people who treat CEOs like celebrities. And in a chicken and egg type situation, the CEOs now act like celebrities. These people now have Twitter and Instagram accounts with millions of followers. Like, imagine 20 years ago if you came across a 25 year old that was like, I wish I could get daily updates from Warren Buffett or the Waltons. You'd think they were fucking weird as fuck. But we follow the life of Elon Musk, not even his career, his life, his relationship with the bizarre indie pop singer Grimes, now currently known as C, just lowercase letter C, and their baby, X Ash A12. When did we ever know these things about the people who run businesses or care to know them? Anyone ever give a fuck who owns Target, who their wife or husband is, their children's names, any of that? Fuck. I never wanted to know the details of my actual boss's families. You just smile at them at the staff Christmas party and move on with your own life. And so, Elon Musk fans get pissy whenever anyone makes fun of the weirdo. Which, yeah, I don't hate the guy, but he's a weird nerd. Of course he is. You have to be. Bill Gates was the richest man in the world at one point. Also a weird nerd. Jeff Bezos looks like he'd eat a puppy on a bet and then tell you to keep the money because eating the puppy was its own reward. Generally, the most successful people on the planet are not the most well-adjusted, normal individuals. It takes a special kind of fucked up person to reach that level, to have the ideas that others just don't have and the drive to want to see them through. And so, we hear about their eccentric bullshit. Like Steve Jobs buying a new car every six months because in California, you didn't have to get a license plate on a new car. And wannabe business owners who run companies with like 40 people try and emulate that type of weird behavior. Not understanding that these people are on another level of fucked up that you can't just fake by trying to do the same weird shit that they do. And so, on slow news days, websites like CNBC post old articles like this on Facebook. Why Elon Musk called an all-hands meeting at 1 in the morning on a Sunday, and what it says about him. Sometime earlier this year, Elon Musk wanted to know why his SpaceX factory wasn't running 24-7, and why production was slow on his rocket that's going to take people to Mars. And he had to get the answer at 1 a.m. on a Sunday, apparently. So, he called a meeting, and found out that apparently the place was a little understaffed by 250 plus people. Now, I don't know if that's Elon Musk's fault, or presumably he has managers that should know how many staff they need, but the article mentions that it doubled the workforce by hiring those 250 people it needed to get the place running 24-7. So, this meeting shouldn't have been necessary on a Sunday at 1 a.m. Better management would have meant it could have happened Monday morning at 8 a.m. three weeks before, and it wouldn't have seemed like such a crisis. But in the article, Elon was quoted as saying, There are way easier places to work, but nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. And all of his goobers come out in support. Love this guy. He is the living, breathing soul of America. Hard work is not a bad thing. Exactly right. Get out and work. You will be amazed how many of your problems go away. I do it at 3 a.m. for fantasy football drafts living in France. I would definitely do it if I worked for Mr. Musk. We all have priorities. Amen, no one that works hard only works 40 hours. One person dared suggest how ridiculous this was. What it says about him? He is a psycho. 1 a.m. in the morning, come on. 
Lots of people commenting how awesome he is. Just go and work with him and attend his 1am meetings. Crying laughing emoji. And they were met with responses like these. 1am meetings are nothing. It wouldn't even phase a hard worker. And that's why you ride a scooter and do not own a space flight company. And this is where we get to the heart of it. These people truly believe that if they just put in the hours, they'll be Elon Musk. You don't own a space flight company because you think 1am meetings are dumb. We live in a society where someone like Lyft uses an example of a woman going into labor and picking up a passenger on the way to the hospital before giving birth as a shining example of an exemplary employee. Instead of saying, holy fuck, society's so broken that a woman had to work literally hours before she gave birth because the best she could do was working in the gig economy, making pennies on the dollar, and has to work twice as hard as people did in the 50s and 60s when a single income could provide for a family of four living in an actual house. No, hard work isn't a bad thing, you're right, and I'm not advocating for being lazy or sucking the government's dick for a check. But working harder will never get you any further than anyone at the top wants you to go. You know, I had a job where I worked nights, weekends, was effectively on call 16 hour days, answered emails at night, on the road, wherever the fuck I was, at axe throwing tournaments, I'm fucking mid throw, my fucking phone's going off, I gotta answer that. 12 years of that. And one day, I was asked to come into an office, and I walked out with my termination notice. None of my contributions mattered to them. What mattered to them was their bottom line and saving their own income. Work 60, 80 hours a week to feed your family if you want, but you'll never be Elon Musk. You'll never be worth what he's worth. Not working for someone else anyway. So then, Elon Musk spends his off hours, what few he has, making jokes on Twitter. Hey, guys gotta unwind somehow. So he tweets this. Jack in the Box should do double duty as a sperm donor clinic. Name is OK Hand Emoji. It's a fine joke. Jack off a of Jack in the Box. I get it. Whatever. So some YouTuber or something goes, Elon makes 60 billion a year to write stupid shit like this. And a whole bunch of people jump on him. Jealous? He also, you know, designs fucking rockets to go into space. But no, by all means, let's piss on the guy for making fucking jokes. Must be a hard life to be so offended and triggered all the time, says the guy who was offended and triggered by his hero being made fun of. That's not why he makes that money. You will never understand, and you will never make that kind of money. Someone else says it's a third graders thinking and joking capacity. And one of Elon's reply guys says, it's burning you up how much smarter and richer he is than you, isn't it? No question mark. But that's the internet. This is what happens when you're a public figure. You post shit, and other people will call it dumb. But what are you hoping will happen when you defend a man worth $100 billion from people making fun of him on the internet? Do you think he's gonna see it and give you a job? I don't know what your qualifications are, but welcome to SpaceX! Here's $100,000 a year! See you for the all-hands meeting at 1am on Sunday! Or better yet, maybe he'll just give you a million dollars, no strings attached. Hey, thanks for defending me from some guy with eight followers on Twitter. Take a million as a token of our new friendship. Oh, or maybe he'll just let you use his name and branding free of charge in your shitty indie game you're making, like this guy keeps asking for. Dear Elon, I'm a game dev, and I am making a game about colonizing Mars with you and SpaceX in it. If you think it's cool, all I need is the go ahead to use your name and logos. I will post this every day for a year, or until I get a yes or a no. As if that constitutes a legally binding contract with regards to intellectual property rights. But this guy's so thirsty for his hero's attention, he's tweeting at him every day for a year. Notice me, senpai! And people hate it when you tell him he might be wrong about something scientific, even if it's not in his field. Just to remind you all, Elon is not a doctor, doesn't have a PhD. Smart guy in his field, no doubt, but not a doctor. So, by his own admission, he may have got COVID. Which, by the way, he said would be gone in April. He then tweets that a rapid test he took came back positive twice and negative twice, and that something extremely bogus is going on. 
A person identifying as a doctor replies, Rapid antigen tests trade sensitivity for speed. They return a result in less than 30 minutes, but can only detect COVID-19 when you're absolutely riddled with it. What's bogus is that Space Karen didn't read up on the test before complaining to his millions of followers. Doc follows it up with some other information about COVID testing in general, and a link to an article about rapid tests from a pretty well-respected scientific journal. But the muskrats attack anyway. The man has already accomplished way more than you would ever do in your whole existence, and you dare degrade him to average US ignorancy? Obviously not taking into consideration he's only talking about the fact this test is supposed to detect COVID. You're just a classical SJW. Looks to me like you're Space Karen, Emma. How is that bogus? People taking the test should be made aware of the low accuracy, especially if they're promoted otherwise. I think we know who the Space Karen is. How is someone a social justice warrior by replying with medical facts? And these other two literally just replied, I know you are, but what am I? You're the Space Karen. That insult doesn't make any sense. She doesn't work in the field of space exploration, like Elon does. But I guess when your hero's insults just involve him calling people pedophiles when they won't use his submersibles to save children in a cave, this is the type of shit you come up with when you've decided you need to fight his battles for him. But he doesn't need your help, and he doesn't care who you are. Those of you who are defending him are just as insignificant to him as those who are talking shit about him. And that's the part you need to understand. When he goes to bed at night, assuming he doesn't sleep standing up while Grimes screams in his face and forces her child to listen to Mersbo remixed with whale noises, he's still worth a hundred billion dollars and you're still you. And no amount of tweeting or bootlicking or claiming you work 60 hours a week every week and everyone else who works less is a pussy will ever change that. But by all means, keep on simping for Elon. You're such a hero. Look at you standing up for the little guy. That happens to be worth billions and is more than capable of dealing with criticism himself and will never even know your fucking name. You should be very proud of yourself.